Halo Combat Evolved revolutionised the console shooter when it was released in 2001. Halo 2 built upon the success of its predecessor, and Halo 3 was an outstanding game and a brilliant conclusion to the original trilogy. When 343 Studios took over the development of the franchise from Bungie, I was cautiously optimistic about the new direction the series was headed. However, while the gameplay of Halo 4 and 5 was strong, I felt that there were many missed opportunities and that perhaps 343 had played it too safe. Their latest entry into the Halo series, Halo Infinite, arrived in 2021 and it's a game that seems to be looking to do things slightly differently in an attempt to shake up the well-trodden formula of the past. But does this new direction make for a game pass, or is the Halo starting to slip on a game fail that cannot step out of the shadow of its past success? This is UNSC Pelican Echo 216. Can you hear me? This is UNS. Halo Infinite takes place after the events of Halo 5 Guardians. Master Chief is found floating in space and is rescued by a UNSC pilot. Together, they take the fight to a group of enemies called the Banished on a ring world called Zeta Halo. The world itself looks reminiscent of old Halo, and the game's visuals were something of a hot topic during its development, with fans concerned over the quality of the enemy models and the look of the environments. While I would say that the fears were put to rest, I wouldn't go so far as to praise the visuals too highly. At times, the world can look underwhelming. The Minecraft-style pillars that populate the open world often look untextured. And when flying through the air, the pillars, combined with the empty space between the broken up islands, can make the game look unfinished. Additionally, almost all the times I battled with a Banshee, it would disappear mid-fight. This really breaks the immersion and adds to the feeling that the game lacks a certain amount of polish that you'd come to expect. On the positive side of things, I think the characters, weapons and interior environments all look good, but nothing you haven't really seen before in a Halo game. The open world has a day-night cycle, and both provide different moods and visuals that at times can look incredibly nice. On the whole, there are some new things here, but it all has a very familiar look, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, it does speak to my criticism of Free for Free, which is that at times they rely on what worked before, instead of rolling the dice on something new. Given the narrative and the setting that 343 chose, the game can't really do much more than provide a 4K version of the world that debuted on the original Xbox, and in that sense, it does its job well. Much like the visuals, the audio elements of the game lean on some of the familiar themes you'd come to expect from a Halo game. Beautiful orchestral music populates the game, and it knows when to ramp it up to make each encounter feel intense and exciting. <laughs> Furthermore, the weaponry and explosions sound like they have a real impact to them, which further adds to the chaos of battle. I will say that a nice new addition with regards to sound is the new sound effects that occur when you find an upgrade or an audio log or make progress throughout the campaign. It's got a nice digital sound to it that works well in contrast to the orchestral music that we're so accustomed to when playing as the Master Chief. The ambient dialogue that can be heard throughout the world, from your enemies and allies, does a good job of layering in some personality and backstory to the ongoing conflict. This, accompanied with the sounds of the world around you, make for an environment that feels alive.
The gameplay of Halo Infinite is fast paced and offers a variety of ways to tackle each encounter. I loved the open areas of Halo 3 that would allow me to trial and error my way through each sequence where no battle was the same. The same is true of Halo Infinite, and the best compliment I can pay to this game is that it reminds me of Halo 3 more so than any other Halo game, and that's because of the freedom of exploration and the free-flowing combat. Add to that the addition of a grappling hook, which creates further variations to combat, and when used efficiently, can make for some fantastic gaming moments. <laughs> When grading the game, I looked at what came before it and what chances 343 took to create something new and interesting. At times, I do think the game plays it safe with familiar themes, enemies, designs and combat that is tried and tested, but I wouldn't say it's a copy and paste approach. There are noticeable improvements from Halo 5 Guardians, and the new elements that have been introduced in Halo Infinite seamlessly integrate into the well-established lore of the world. As a Halo game, I think it's one of the best. The campaign is well paced, and the story is well told. It kept me engaged throughout, and the gameplay made it an absolute joy to traverse from set piece to set piece. Having said all of that, an argument could be made for the slightly repetitive nature of the open world side missions, which felt slightly outdated, but as they're optional it's not a huge issue. With that being said, I give the campaign of Halo Infinite a well earned B grade. Consider this a game pass. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've made it through to the end, please consider dropping a like and subscribing for more game pass or game fail videos. As always, I'm super curious to see whether or not you agreed with my grade, so be sure to let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.